Hey guys, it's me again, and I am here to share with you another free resource called Adobe Spark. And I think a lot of people get very intimidated by it because you think of Adobe and your brain automatically goes to Photoshop. But I don't want you to fret or have any fear about using this one. It's free, it's super easy to use, great for teachers and students. And I can't wait to share it with you. Um, this is a great way for you as a teacher. It's a great tool for you to have in your toolbox to create um, dynamic uh, websites, videos, or just static uh, graphics that you need to create. Um, and it's a great way for your students to showcase and visualize their thinking and to verbalize their thinking as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to dive into a very quick walkthrough of Adobe Spark. So you will access Adobe Spark by going to spark.adobe.com and you should see it scrolling down there at the bottom. But really quick when you get here, you'll land on your dashboard. And if you're familiar with Canva, which has a free and a paid version, this is very similar. But to me, this is much more user friendly. And so you'll see you have some options here of different things that you can create. And then if you scroll down, your recent projects will be there. And if you scroll down even further, you'll see some templates for creating for the classroom. <clears throat> what I love about this is that you have all these different kind of templates that are already created. So if you're a science teacher teaching states of matter, or if you're a math teacher, there's some things that are in here. All of these are completely editable. You can change them, alter them to be whatever it is that you need. Um, if you are looking for kind of a study planner or some like kind of daily to-do list for your students, that's here as well. If you have littles and you're looking for coloring pages, um, uh, different sounded out activities. And there is a way I want to share with you, and I'll probably make another video on this, to take any kind of worksheets or PDFs that you have and bring them into your Google Slides as a background to make them, um, to make it where your students can interact with them. So that's something that I'll share with you guys probably in my next video. But as I'm scrolling down, hopefully you're kind of seeing what's here so you can see what might catch your eye or some ways that you could use some of these um, templates. And you'll see there's, I believe that said 1,987 templates that are in here. Book reviews, somebody asked me about an online book club, um, counting activities. So you'll see there's tons of stuff in here. So just so you know, there's a bunch of stuff there. I'm gonna go back home and there are three different things that I wanna show you really quickly that you have access to that are in here. Um, the first is a flyer, the second is a web page, and the third is a video. So for the flyer, um, once you come in here, it's gonna give you a bunch of templates that are already in here that they have created that you can again edit, you can change the color, the font, the style, whatever you wanna do, you will notice that some of them are related to education, some of them are like related to like dog sitting or pets, but you can change the images on any of these to meet what you need. So if you're into templates, you have a bunch there, or you can start from scratch, which you have your blank document here. Um, what's great about starting from scratch is that all you have to do is come up here and click this plus button, and you will then get, if you click text, for example, you'll get all different kinds of text options that pop up. So if I like this one, all I have to do is click it. It will then drop it onto my thing here. I can double click and I could say, welcome to science class and then click done. And it's automatically gonna change it for me. I can drag and drop it, move it anywhere I want to. I can change the color, the font. I can change the alignment, line spacing, the size, the opacity, etc. So you have access to all of that. Then if I click that plus again, and let's say I wanna put a photo on here, I can click photo. You can upload a photo that you already have on your device, or you can come down here, you see you have some different options here. If I wanna find free photos, now this is great for your students because it doesn't, um, it, it touches on all the copyright issues, right? These are all uh, images that they're able to use. So I can search for science and let's say I like these test tubes. Now I can either make it a background or I can move it around freely. For this example, I'm gonna make it a background, which is great because then it puts it as a static background there and it won't move around. Um, if you click the plus sign again, you can have icons. So maybe I wanna find, um, I don't know, an icon of some test tubes. 
Let's see what comes up. Let's say I like that one. And so you can change again the color. You can do anything you want to do. But this is a great way to create graphics for your students and for your students to also create graphics. Maybe they're doing book snaps. Maybe they've read a book and you want them to create kind of like a one page book snap book report kind of thing. Um, they can do that here. Maybe they're creating a one page um, uh, let's say flyer for a social justice movement or something like that. So this is just a great way to create a quick flyer or graphic for um, for you as a teacher or for your students to showcase their learning. The next thing I want to show you is the web page. Now, a lot of times I will defer to Google Sites because it's just easy to use. Adobe Spark makes it so, so easy to create a web page. Like, watch this. So again, let's do our science example. Welcome to science class. And I could say Dr. Natasha Rachel, and maybe I'm teaching physical science. Okay. Now I can come up here and click and add a photo background. So I'm going to again go to find free photos and I'm going to say physical science. Let's see what pops up. Bunch of stuff. Um, let's go with. Uh, let's just go with this one here. So it'll put a background behind there for me. Okay. Now I can scroll down and I have this plus button here. This is how I'm going to add to my web page. So maybe now I want to add text and, and I want to say, um, welcome back. Here is your syllabus for the semester. Now, I'm here, but I want it to be more bold, right? This is the first thing my kids are seeing. I can change it to be a heading, and I can then center it. Um, if you want to do bulleted list or numbered list, you have access to that as well. I could come down and click the plus. Maybe there's a uh, video that I have created welcoming my kids back to class and telling them how the semester is going to run. I can create that or create the video somewhere else and then bring it in here. Um, you also have a, a photo grid. You can even do split layout where you have your image on one side and your text on the other. You can do clickable buttons. So maybe this is going to link out to your Google Classroom or maybe it links out to a Flipgrid. Um, grid that you want your kids to leave a response on. Um, again, text, photos, so you have access to all of that. I'm going to add just a few photos in here and I'm just going to add a, a few different ones. So, and you'll see, ooh, is it gone? It gave you some different options for how you want that video. Here we go to fit in line with what you already have. Um, I'm going to just add some more text here just so I can show you and we'll add one more image. Um, so you can see what this looks like. So once you have it kind of how you want it to be, you can come up here and click this uh, present button or the preview button. I'm going to click present and you'll see that this is what your students would see or your parents as you share this with them. So you see how scrollable it is. It's just super easy to use. Again, if you had buttons or links in here, they would just click it and you, they'd be good to go. Now, what I love about this for your students is as they are creating, it is creating that credits page. So now they are citing their work, which is absolutely awesome. Something we definitely teach our kids to do. Um, so again, once you're finished, you come up here to share, you can publish and share the link. You can also invite other people to collaborate on this with you. So if you are putting students into groups to collaborate on a project or some kind of group assignment, they can do that. You can do that right here or they can then invite each other to their own documents. So let's come out and you can do that with that flyer that I shared with you as well. The last one that I want to show you is right here and it's video. Video is an awesome way to create quick, simple videos for you as a teacher or again for your students to showcase what they have learned. So it is slowly coming up here. There are some templates again that are already pre-built in here that you can use or you can totally start from scratch. Every story starts from somewhere. Tell us about your idea or title. So I'm going to say welcome back to school because that just happens to be my default right now. And it's going to go through its little AI magic and it's going to pull up um, what they think we might like. So here we have this video. If I click play, it's going to kind of walk me through, have some tips to get started. So I say, OK, I'm good to go. And then it's as simple as this. You'll see down here that you have these are all different frames for your video. So you could add text, you could add um, 
uh, images, welcome back to school. And then you even have an audio feature. So if your kids are showcasing their learning, they can record their voices and put their voices into their learning. So they're not only visualizing their learning, they're verbalizing it as well. How awesome is that for my math teachers? What if you had your kids work out math problems, just for example, and if they had to work it out on paper, they could take images of that, upload it here, and then talk you through their thinking. Um, just a way to get around not having an interactive whiteboard or something like that. Um, here you have different screen options. When you're finished with this one, you can go to the next one. You can add, um, you can rearrange these. Super easy to use. Again, once you're done, you can download it and share it um, and be good to go. So that is a quick walkthrough of Adobe Spark. I hope you love it as much as I do. I hope you find it as user friendly as I think it is. And I hope that you will incorporate it not only into your teaching practice, but as a way to formatively assess your students. If you have any questions, let me know. And I look forward to sharing another resource with you. Have a great day and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.